All right, here we are in draft number two. Once again, as in the first draft, all the rares and uncommons in the pack are pretty crappy. Um, so the Rites of Flourishing is kind of a neat card. Everyone gets an additional card and can play additional lands, but it's bi-directional. So unless you can build your deck around a card like this, if you're just playing with the random junk and limited, it's not like a bomb by any means. Um, so here, so a Scepter of Empires is sort of artifact removal. It's, you know, not bad. Uh, there's a Merfolk Looter, which you can take to, um, you know, it's a really solid blue card. You can draw into a lot of stuff. Um, it's pretty good. The Pegasus is a nice white flyer. Soren's Thirst is removal. I don't like taking it first. I just don't like playing or taking a card at the beginning that's sort of weak as far as removal goes and uh, has such a restrictive mana requirement. I'd rather take something that I'm more likely to end up playing. Um, and since uh, I do like things that fly and can attack my opponent, I'll let the looter go by and I'll grab this uh, Pegasus. There's also the giant spider, but not as big a fan of that guy, especially after in my last match I got blown out with it, or when I was trying to use it by a basilisk. Alright, here, um, more stuff that's not so great. There is this uh, Lawkeeper, which is in my color, so it looks like I might end up having to go white again. Um, the Gravedigger is a pretty solid black creature, so I want to keep an eye on that, and this Divination is nice and blue for drawing card. I seem to like these boots more than most people to um, make my creatures untargetable and hasty, and I like these birds. They're not really worth enough tickets to warrant taking, and they're not like strong on their own to go into green. This is a really good card to see after you're already in green for your mana fixing, not the other way around. Otherwise, I don't really see anything particularly exciting here. This Hellhound did wreck me in the last draft, but not a good enough reason to go in red. So I'll just stick with my white color here and uh, keep at it with the small but effective creatures, see what else comes along. Okay, so it looks like black might be open, unless this was an amazing pack. This Doomblade coming in pick three is pretty sweet. So uh, that's a pretty good thing to see. Someone is gonna have a good blue deck, I'm afraid though, because there's another looter here. And uh, so whoever got the first one is probably gonna get this one as well. I do like this Pegasus, very unlikely that it will it will wheel to me, so I'm guessing that whatever's coming to me the second time I see this pack is gonna be pretty crappy, because most of the stuff in here is not super great. Maybe this bear, but again, I'm really hoping to, to get some black and or white from now on. So I'll grab the good removal. Alrighty, so at this point, there's a nice red removal spell. Um, it, I've, maybe I'm overly conservative, let me know what you think in the comments, but I just find that uh, just, I just really don't like taking early picks that have costly mana requirements. Now this does seem to indicate that red is open, so maybe more red cards will be forthcoming. Um, this shade is an interesting card. It's, you know, it's one of those things that's pretty crappy, but if you do have a lot of black mana, it can be really strong. So I could take that and try to go for black here. The fact that there's an arsonist, though, two good red cards in this pack, does seem to suggest that red is open. So even though I might regret not having a second lockkeeper later on, I think I'll try to um, rail against my conservative tendencies and grab this outrage just because it is a really good removal spell. And if black happens to dry up, I can maybe switch into red. Okay, so let's take a look at what we have here. There's nothing good in white at all except for this awful enchantment. Um, there's nothing good in black either. This is a, sort of a marginal creature of 4, 3, for 5. Uh, the bear is pretty cool in blue, so whoever got those looters is going to also see a second bear, which is rather sad. But I, I guess red, if anything, seems to be a bit more open, so I'll grab this piker and see if more red comes along. Although if black shows up again, I'll certainly be happy to switch away from it, or from red back into um, black. I'm not going to like get you know obsessive over this piker. Alright, so quite a few decent cards here. Man, someone's just going to have a freaking bear army. Uh, and the Skyminder Drake is really good too, so I'm just... Oh man, it seems like blue might be open here. Uh, I'm trying to decide if I should keep going with the white, because there is a nice sideboard card. There is the Griffin, which is a great flyer. The Arsonist, of course, is solid stuff. I could try to make the jump to blue, but since there are decent cards in my colors, I'm just going to go for it. I think maybe uh, white and red might still both be open, so I'm going to grab the big flyer, because this can uh, have a pretty major impact on the game. Okay, so in this hound, seeing more red creatures, seeing a good blue creature as well, I think I think the killer deck in this draft is going to be a 
blue one, I have a feeling. Now I have a nice flyer for five, or I have this nice red dude for three. Now if you look at my mana curve so far, I don't actually have anything at the three spot. Looks pretty certain I am going to be playing red at this point. So rather than taking a five power creature that's very defensive and doesn't attack all that well, I'm going to take the earlier, more aggressive creature. Then maybe I can do that combo with the red dude that makes things unblockable, followed by the fiery hellhound pumping in for the win. Alright, well if I am going for um, white and red, it's nice to see that this uh, veteran is here. So definitely not uh, minding grabbing that. Now is this, is this my pack? I don't think this was my pack. I hope this was not my pack, yeah. So I'm going to got, got this veteran here, which is fine creature. Ah, uh, yes, 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 here we go. This is this is the pack that I started with. I could go for Fire Breathing. It was pretty effective against me in the last draft. I still don't particularly like it, though. I would rather just um, grab this Mana Lith, because if I do ever want to play this Doom Blade, the Mana Lith would be a nice thing to have in my deck. All right, wow, oh my goodness. There is so, so depressing to see this Divination. I think I'm just going to hate draft it. Blue evidently is wide wide open. Now, Tectonic Rift is in my colors. I'm not a big fan of this card. It can blow people out, but sometimes um, if it's late game, the land killing doesn't do much, and if the opponent does have flyers, it's just sort of irrelevant. So I'm going to hate draft this and hide it. The Merfolk Looter came all the way around. Holy crap. I guess no one's doing blue. Well, I'm going to take it, because I certainly don't want anyone to get a late pick Merfolk Looter. Maybe I should have just made the jump into blue. Now, I've never played with this great sword before. It seems pretty mighty, especially when you stick it on a flyer. Um, now, I do have two at the moment, and I can prioritize them higher if I take it. I think I'd rather go for that. It seems stronger than a 3-5 five for 5 mana. All right, I'll get this enchantment. I'll keep it unhidden for now, but I'm certainly not planning to take it. And, wow, these are two solid cards. I'm going to go for the Purge. Uh, I hate to give someone a last pick Phantasmal Bear, but hopefully that person's not in blue anyway, and they're not going to care. And I, I could use the Celestial Purge in my own deck, because it can get rid of red or black things, so it's a pretty sweet sideboard card. All right, looking for some uh, blue or red strong cards, and my mana curve is pretty low, so I can definitely pick up a few big things. The only thing I have that's really big on my mana curve is this Great Sword, which um, is, you know, kind of a high-cost card. All right, so in this pack, I do get a nice red card. So this Chieftain pumps up my other goblins, of which I do have one, that Goblin Piker. Uh, certainly not bad. I'm seeing some more boots. This enchantment is kind of neat because it makes a creature invincible to creatures. Um, that's really neat and all, but uh, I think I have to go for the pacifism. Because at the moment, I do have the Outrage and questionably splashing for the doom blade and then the law keeper but um yeah pacifism is just a pretty strong card i think i'd rather have it than the creature which is not exactly a bomb a 2-2 with haste is what it's going to be for the most part and that's not really worth taking a um it's not really worth taking over a pacifism other noteworthy cards here uh if the boots or the mighty leap or the spirit mantle come back around i will be really happy the onyx mage is actually not bad too although i'm not I'm certainly I'm probably not playing black here, although I only technically have just two more black red cards than black cards, so black is still maybe an option, but anyway, the pacifism is what it's got to be. Okay, so I have shock here, or I have the volcanic dragon. Oh, man alive. Well, I think the rule of thumb is you take bombs over removal. And I do classify this as a bomb. I mean, a flying 4-4 four four is pretty mighty, and the fact that it can attack the turn that you play him down is kind of amazing. So someone is going to get a third pick shock. Now, what I'm hoping maybe might wheel is the Mighty Leap. I'd love combat tricks. Maybe too much, maybe too much. But yeah, I, I do like the opportunity to get this big creature. Plus, it's an uncommon. Shock is common, so I'm more likely to get a shock later than I am to get another big dragon. Okay, so let's take a look at what we have here. This, amazingly, this Goblin Grenade business has really been, uh, has, has wrecked me a couple of times. I really only have the one Goblin, so I just, uh, I don't really feel like going for it. There's a big green bomb, so that's a shame that that's going around. Um, blue mind control is good to know, so with that around, um, it's nice to know that uh, I need to probably try to pick up a demystify at some point so I can kill that enchantment 
and have at least some kind of an answer to it because this is such a mighty card it's like two cards of advantage basically so it's pretty impressive uh, but since I'm pretty sure I'm not in blue at this point I'm just gonna take another assault griffin I do love those guys I still want to live the dream someday and play a griffin rider with an actual griffin in play so let's keep hoping okay in this pack there's, there's really really uh, nothing 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 whatsoever um, this crimson mage I guess is what it'll be it's just a 2-1 for 2 the ability is kind of interesting on this one so you can use activated abilities that don't require tapping to turn a creature comes into play so if you have an extra red mana then he he himself can be hasty uh, more importantly though for him though is that he can uh, pop ice cages sadly the ability targets creature you control as opposed to a creature so I cannot use him to kill the army of phantom bears that we passed in pack one but um, it's you know the only playable creature in this pack so I might as well go for it all right seeing lots of red cards are any of them good well that is a different story so uh, lava axe is not so great doesn't really affect the board. Combust is a nice sideboard removal. I feel pretty confident in my removal at the moment with the Lawkeeper, the Pacifism, the Outrage, and if I'm desperate, uh, the Doomblade, possibly the Celestial Purge coming in. So I don't want to take um, sideboard removal over something I might play. These Bang Truckers, I hate them so much. I hate them. But uh, yeah, this is a big dude, and I uh, could use a, maybe another big dude, so I'm going to go for it. What is Incinerate? doing in this pack well it's certainly encouraging and i certainly don't mind taking it and there's a goblin arsonist here so if i would taken a goblin grenade before he'd be pretty sweet but uh, yeah incinerate burns things burns the opponent it's good stuff all right well um i have a couple of choices here the vandal is nice for killing artifacts i haven't seen any super amazing artifacts so far so i'm not particularly scared of any artifacts people might have and I certainly don't want it to get in the way of my Great Sword or Manolith if I do decide to play those. So I'm going to go for this Mighty Leap. I just love combat tricks. And uh, it's a pretty sweet card. It's better than a, you know, 2-2 two, two for 3. This pack has lots of red, but it's all kind of bad. I still don't really want to take Lava Axes. I'm still just not a fan of Fire Breathing. Honestly, at this point, I'm just going to hate draft the Morphoke Looter to stop somebody from getting 15 billion of them and creating some kind of a sick deck. Alright, so I have a choice here between another copy of Mighty Leap or Act of Treason. I think, since I already have the co this type of combat trick, I'll go for the Act of Treason. So if there's a stalemate, I can maybe break through it. Um, it's a close call. This is something that I can definitely see people disagreeing with me on. Well, that validated that decision because this pack has another Mighty Leap. So now I will take a second copy of it, but that's definitely it. I am done with Mighty Leaps, I promise. Alright, so Goblin Grenade came around. I still don't really have the goblins to fuel it. Divine Favor is still a crappy enchantment. Lifelink is still an enchantment I don't want to use. So I'm just going to take the Goblin Grenade to stop the other red deck from playing it, but I'm not going to play it myself. I'm really not going to play this Lightning Elemental. I mean, it's marginal, maybe if I'm desperate for playables, but I've already got 21 picks and 10 creatures. I just don't think I'm going to be that desperate. So I'm just going to take the Coral Morphoak, because somebody might actually use those. Alright, somebody's thinking really hard about their third to last pick. This guy is green. Did he drop out? Interesting. Good luck, HF, he says. Good luck, HF, to you as well, sir. Alright, well, Harbor Serpent is something that somebody might use. Lifelink is something I could be using if I'm desperate for playables. I'll go for the lifelink. I really don't. Harbor of Serpent doesn't really concern me. I won't have any islands. So I'll just take the crappy enchantment that I might use. And this other crappy enchantment that I might use. But let's hide them both because they are really bad. Is there anything else I need to hide? Oh, yes, this Divine Favor needs to go away. And I'm going to take away the Celestial Purge and the Doom Blade because they're kind of sideboard desperate cards. Alright, everything else seems pretty good. Well, this is a catastrophe because there's nothing 
red except for this war paint, which is questionable. Uh, and the Oromancer, which could get back a pacifism if it gets bounced or something. All the stuff here is for other colors. Cemetery Reaper, have not seen this one. Other zombie you control get plus one, plus one. Exile target creature, wow, that's kind of a black bomb because you can make lots and lots of two, two black zombies. Wow, am I really hate drafting here? Oh man, I hate these guys too. Oh, these are really strong. The black players I play against always seem to end up triggering this and it becomes a 4-4 four, four with lifelink. Um, I guess I'm more afraid of the, the Reaper because it just seems like it, for the long game it's much more significant and I'm really not going to play Goblin Warpaint so yeah, let's just hate draft this rare. That's really sad. Okay, in this pack more war paint and fireball well you can never really say no to fireball this pegasus almost certainly not going to make its way back around to me that is sad but uh the happiness of a pegasus is nowhere close to the happiness of fireball anything else i need to worry about here no it's, and there's another looter going around but yeah this is all where are all the white and red cards sadness 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 i think there just aren't any in the packs This time I do have interesting choices. So the Tunneler, I can do try to go for the Tunneler and Hellhound combo, but honestly I don't mind having another Volcanic Dragon. So I said before that I was more likely to see a Shock than a Volcanic Dragon, and I was wrong. So here's another Dragon. Yeah, I think having two in my deck is fine. Uh, then it just gives me incentive to play this Manolith, and I'll be okay. So I'm going to go for it. He's pretty strong. So more of a crappy flyer, more crappy aura mancers. I don't need a second manolith. I can go for a pretty bad combat trick in red or another creature. Now I am kind of low on creatures, still only at 11. So I think at this one I will take this 2-2 two, two for 3. That's kind of sad, but maybe somebody was going to play that scepter that was going around where I can blow up one of these numerous manoliths and uh, get myself an advantage with him. Okay, so I can take the armored warhouse, try to go for some early aggression. Uh, with this deck being at the moment more red than white, it's going to be tough to play him on turn two, which is unfortunate. The alternative is the Goblin Arsonist, which I'm more likely to be able to play, and which can actually stop things in their tracks almost as well as the Warhorse can. People don't want to tack into a Goblin Arsonist when they see that they have a valuable 1-1 one -one creature they want to keep around. Fling is interesting. I, I've, had it, I've had it used effectively against me. I just still have a hard time wrapping my mind around how to use it effectively myself. It just feels like you're burning two cards to kill one thing. Um, and I don't have any arsonists in my deck at the moment, so there's nothing here that you know I profit from when it dies. So I'll just take the arsonist. It's a, another creature, and I do need some more of those. All right, here I have another Doomblade opportunity, but I'm pretty sure I'm not going to play my other one. Sad, I'll just you know be sad that this is going to someone who's playing black. I can go for Salt Griffin number four, griffin.deck here, or take another Purge for my sideboard. Well, I feel like I still could use some more creatures, and I'm really only at 22 playable picks. So yeah, I'm going to take this. Hopefully I can uh, upgrade enough cards so I don't have to play this 5-mana 4-4 four, four creature. And there's some good cards open in the packs, just not in my colors. So we'll go with the best that we can. Okay, here I have to make a choice. These Minotaurs are strong, especially if you can trigger Bloodthirst, which I might be able to do with the Pegasus that's going around, or any of my early drops. But uh, Demystify is a good sideboard card against that mind control I saw earlier. Well, and what is possibly a controversial decision, I'm going to go for the Minotaurs, because that mind control might screw me, and I really have zero answers against it. But, at the very least, I know I'm going to play that mind control a maximum of one, one match, whereas these Minotaurs will be useful in every match. Alright, more Bang Chuckers, another Master Thief. Well, this veteran came around late certainly nice now that I have a thing on 4-4 that I might need to trigger. So it's a good creature, kind of a hill giant dish, and I'm going to take it. I'm going to check here to see if I have enough white creatures to make this Guardian's Pledge worthwhile. I already have two Mighty Leaps. Yeah, honestly, I just... I don't see that being useful except in desperate situations, although really the Oromancer is bad and I do not need any more random 2-2. Two two. So I'll try this. I might not play it, but I might just see if I want to sideboard it in in some cases. 
wow, this is pretty sweet. Uh, the Pegasus came back around, and I will certainly take it. The War Horse is harder to cast, and the Pegasus has evasion, so let's definitely do it. So, how afraid am I of cancel? Not very afraid. How likely am I to play to write Lightning Elemental? Not at all. Well, I'm going to take cancel because there's a chance it might be used against me. And there's a chance this. I definitely am not going to play a second Guardian's Pledge, so there's a chance this ghoul will be used against me. So I'll hate draft that. And we got. Wow, white creatures out the monkey. Well, I'll take this War Horse. I'm more likely to use it than the Mastodon. Someone is drafting lands for some reason. Weird. Alright, so that's everything. Exactly equal in red and white. I seem to have a few extra picks, so I'll have some choices to make as I build this deck. Alright. Do a sort by color, which it already is, and prioritize. Well, first of all, let's put all my removal and bombs in here. That would be the incinerate, the lawkeeper, the pacifism, celestial purge stays in the sideboard. Definitely putting in the fireball, the two dragons, Chandra's outrage. And I'm not using goblin grenade, even though I did pick up an arsonist and I have a piker, uh, and is the Manic Vandal a go oh, it's the Manic Vandal is a human baloney nuts, is what I say to that. That is that is totally a goblin. Anyway, so I only have two two things to fuel goblin grenade. It's a little risky. I don't think I'm gonna put it in unless I'm up against a really strong deck and feeling desperate. So I don't wanna put Vandal in because uh, it's definitely sideboardy. The arsonist is solid, Crimson Mage is solid. Didn't end up getting one of the tunnelers, so the Hellhound is sort of mediocre. I'm going to hold off on that, but the Minotaurs are strong. Hold off on the Giant. Um, I definitely want my two Flying Birds. I love me some combat tricks, so I'm going to put in the two Leaps. I'm going to hold off on this War Horse. Don't want to strain my mana unless I have to. The Veterans definitely need to go in, and uh, yeah, let's put in my Griffin Army. So I am kind of highly curved. So I'll put in a mana lift since I often don't have anything to drop on turn three. And I have a choice. I can put in this great sword, which puts me on an even greater mana strain, but it could also turn these Pegasi into beasts. So that's definitely something to consider. I also have these three flyers. So the great sword, I've never played with it, but man, it's it's kind of tempting me, I, I have to admit. I could also just play it safe, put in this, you know, piker for some early stuff, but that's just oh, so mediocre. Let's take a look at color here. Uh, I end up, so I had m more red for a while, but now I do have quite a lot of white. So if I do end up deciding to go more plains than mountains, the Armored Warhorse starts to make a lot more sense. Because a lot of my red cards are high, the that have doubles in their cost are high costing, so that'll give me more time to find the Manolith and uh, the the mountain that I need in order to be able to cast them. So yeah, let's go for the war horse. I need to put in two more things. Let's see, I have 14 creatures. It's a goodly number of creatures. I have a pretty high curve. I've got six cards that are four or more, so I don't want to put in this five mana costing 4-4, four, four, especially because a lot of these 4 costing cards, they're really difficult to deal with for the opponent. I don't feel like I need something that's super huge anymore. You know, let, let's try this this sword. I really just, you know, I'm lacking for 3 drops, so whatever, let's, let's put it in there, see what happens. And I can either put in a piker to try to go with the sword, like to increase the odds of like a turn 2 uh, Piker, turn three sword, turn four. Yeah, no, that's that's way too late. That's just, yeah, I think that by the time I can do that, that, that won't be worth it. So the question is, you know, uh, do I put that Piker in, which is a mediocre creature? Do I splash for Doomblade and put in a single Swamp and hope to cast that off the Swamp and the Manolith? Or do I just put in, like, this uh, Hellhound or the Active Treason as a combat trick? 
Um, how greedy do I feel today? I could, this Doom Blade is tempting me. Just to put in one swamp, and then that and the Manolith is enough to try to splash for it. I might do it if I'm desperate against a, and up against a, a really, really strong deck. Let's go for the... I could go for an enchantment, actually. Because I do have a lot of evasion, lifelink, divine favor to beat that. No, let's go for the act of treason. I just like that card. Although if I put in a white card, I'll have a justification for using more planes. Hmm. All right, let's go for the act of treason. Let's see what MTGO suggests. Nine planes, eight mountains. I guess that makes a certain kind of sense, because I do need mountains to cast things, but I really want to get this war horse. I'm going to try ten planes, seven mountains. Please tell me in the comments if you have any advice for my mana inclusion, because I have no idea how to make good judgments on this, and I feel like I'm just making bad decisions at all times. All right, so that's it. It's time to submit, and I'll see you later with the games.